In this lesson, I'm going to give you a tour of the timeline. And to follow along, open up Working Files, open up the Photoshop PFD files, and then open up 0203 Timeline by double-clicking on it. This is the project we worked on in the previous lesson, so it will look familiar to you if you opened up that project. I'm going to show you the timeline here, and to do that, I'm going to expand the view a little bit by dragging this up, like so. There we go. There are the five tracks there. And I'm in the motion workspace. Just in case your workspace is not the motion workspace, you can go up here and choose motion from this list here. All right, this is the timeline down here. This is where you do all of your video editing. If this were typical video editing software, this would be called a track. Track one, two, three, and four. And down here would be an audio track. So video tracks up here and audio tracks down here. But here they're not really referred to as tracks. They're called groups or just individual clips here residing on the timeline. The timeline shows you the time where certain things are going to play. So if you go to the beginning of the timeline by dragging this little time insertion point, it's also called the playhead, sometimes called the current time indicator. If you bring that to the beginning of the project. And now I want to play through this project. I want to see how things play out over time like this. And there are a couple of ways to do that. You can scrub through it by just grabbing this little bug here, this little playhead, and pulling it through like that, dragging it through. You can see how it's going to play like that. There you go. You won't hear any audio when you scrub. It just plays video. If you want to play it in real time, you click on this little play button over here. Notice that it turns into a stop button after you click the play. Click on stop and it stops. These other controls have some use, but you're going to find that you're going to use keyboard shortcuts to run these guys down the road. And I'll explain keyboard shortcuts in the next lesson. But this one here takes you back to the beginning of the timeline, the first frame. You click on that and the little playhead goes back to the beginning there. And these two buttons here, this one there and that one there, move you forward or backward one frame at a time. You click on that one frame at a time, like so. This little scissors is a way to split a clip. I'm going to explain this in some detail in an upcoming lesson, but I'll give you a brief overview now. I'm going to drag the little bug here, the little playhead, or right to here, for example. I want to split this clip down there. So if I click on this, it won't split it because that clip is not selected. But if I click on it, now it'll be selected. I'm going to split it. And splitting comes in handy if you want to remove a big chunk of video. The video will play as if nothing is split. It'll play right through there smoothly. No indication that there's a split there because it goes from one frame to the next. It doesn't leave a gap. It just plays right through there. But if I remove this now, it'll jump to the next clip. Here I can press delete and remove that. All the other clips will slide over, fill that gap, and now it'll go from that place where we cut that thing out, and it'll play into the next clip. Like that. That's how that works. I'll undo that by opening up history here and go back to the beginning. This is the way that you access the transitions, the video transitions called crossfades. We'll talk about this in an upcoming lesson. I'll close that by clicking that button again. This is the time. Right now you see five with a colon and then two zeros and an F. That means five seconds and zero frames, 10 seconds, zero frames. We're looking at what's called NTSC video. That's the video standard in North America and Japan. And the frame rate for NTSC video is 29.97 frames per second, which seems like an odd number to have, but that's just the way it is. So basically, you think in terms of 30 frames per second. I can zoom in here on the timeline so you get to see the frames individually here. I'll just take this little controller down here and slide it between these two sort of mountains here. This is the zoomed out view. This is the zoomed in view. So I'll pull it forward like this and we'll zoom in. And it zooms in wherever the current time indicator, wherever the playhead is. Drag it forward there. Now you're going to begin to see frames. You go 30 seconds and zero frames, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then it'll be 30, basically starting over at 31 seconds there. That's frames like that. If this were PAL video, which is a video format that's common in Europe and the rest of the world, then this would be 25 frames per second. If you want to switch from seconds and frames to just frames, you can do that. Not many people edit that way, but you can change it. You go down here where the number exists, where you see the time there. Hold on the Alt key in Windows or the Option key in Mac and just click. You see it changes the frames there. And if you were to calculate, let's say, about 45 seconds times 30 frames per second, you're going to get something more than 1,300 frames, which is right. We've got 1,280 right at that point there. And if we zoomed in, we'd see the exact number of frames at the end there. I'm going to switch back now by going down here and alter option clicking on it to switch back to just seconds and frames, which is the standard default way to do video editing. The scroll bar down on the bottom here lets you move back and forth when you've zoomed in. If you zoom all the way out, for example, then you don't need to worry about it zooming around too much. But if you zoom in, you might need to use the scroll bar to zoom around a little bit. And you want to zoom in lots of times when you want to make very precise edits. 
So for example, if I put my current time indicator in my playhead here, for example, let's say I want to trim this clip right here. We'll talk about trimming later, but if I want to trim this clip, then I can trim it right there to the playhead and I can see exactly where I want to trim it. So I'll click on this clip to make it active, and then I can go over here and I can trim it to the left and edit precisely because I can zoom in on it and see the current time indicator of the playhead right there, and I can make a nice precise edit that way. I'll undo that by just going back to the opening set like that. I'm going to zoom back out so I can see everything again. So I'll pull this back so you can see the whole thing. There we go. Maybe zoom in a little bit. There we go. This is called the work area bar. I slide this to the left a little bit. You see two ends there, that work area bar, and then on the right, it's the other end of the work area bar. The purpose of the work area bar is to set how much of the video you want to export when you're done, how much of it you want to render. Normally, it's the entire length of your project, so the work area bar expands or contracts as you add clips or delete clips or change the lengths of clips. I'm going to make these guys a little bit longer here. I'm going to grab this one down here and make it longer. You'll see that the work area bar then will slide to the right accordingly. Let me just drag this to the right, and you'll see that the work area bar now covers that extra length. If I were to undo that, let's just say, and maybe shorten things down by shortening down this audio here, and the work area bar will adjust accordingly to the longest thing in our project. I'll do Control or Command Z to undo that. There we go. These disclosure triangles here reveal some keyframes. You can make things change over time using keyframes. So these stopwatches here, these animation switches, turn keyframes on or off. So now we have a bunch of keyframes here causing this clip to behave in a certain way. It gets a little bit bigger and it also has an opacity change. You can access all these keyframes that way. Some of them have keyframes, some of them don't. This little drop-down list here lets you add media to a track. So if you say add media, that opens up this add clips dialog box. You can add clips then to this track right there. You can also add a new group by clicking on the new video group here, and that'll add another track that'll be empty like that. It's an empty track waiting for you to fill it with stuff, which you can do by just clicking here and doing that way. I'll delete this track now by going down here and saying delete. I'll close this down now. A couple more things here at the bottom. If you click on this, it turns it into frame animation. And it doesn't really work very well in video. It just takes the first frame of each clip and then makes that clip last for as long as these clips last. But it's just one frame, not something that you would likely do with video. And this little button opens up the Render Video dialog box, something we'll do toward the end of the course. So we'll just leave that alone for the time being. And that wraps up this overview of features you're going to find inside the timeline. In the next lesson, I'm going to explain some keyboard shortcuts that you can use to simplify and streamline some timeline tasks.